Yo, 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 what is happening with y'all, man? Today we are back with some heat. I'm going to be showing you guys how to do a nice low taper. He also will be keeping his sideburns. But to start off this cut, we're going to go ahead and deep off the sides with the number four. And he's going to keep the length on top, so we're not going to touch anything up there. But when I'm taking down the sides, I want to make sure I'm stopping as I get towards the parietal ridge area. Just so I don't give him a full hawkish type of look. So I'm making sure as I get towards the top of that, I'm flicking out. And to blend into the length that he has on top, I'm going to be using my thinning shears. And the reason I like my thinning shears versus clipper over comb is because I'm, I feel like it gives it a nice softer blend rather than the clipper over comb, which kind of cuts very harsh and straight across. But when I'm doing this, I'm making sure I'm flaring out with the comb and anything sticking out, I'm gonna go ahead and cut that with a thinning shear. Now getting into the taper, I'm gonna start off by lightening up the area where I will be doing it with the number two guard all the way open. And again, as I get higher, I'm making sure I flick out. And to start off the taper process, I'm gonna go ahead and set my bald line with my trimmer at the bottom of the eyebrow and then right there where the top of the ear meets the head and I'm trying to make the guideline kind of round because I want to have like a roundish look to the taper and then I'm going to follow it up with the shaver just to add another layer to that fade get it a little bit closer to the skin and then I'm going to follow that up with my clipper all the way open going up about a half an inch maybe not even and you want to make sure <clears throat> you are using the corner of your blade just because if you do use the full clipper against the head, you might take off too much hair because you are working in a very small area. I also want to keep that same shape that I made with my first guideline. And I'm just going over it, making sure that, that the length is even all the way through. And then to lighten up that line in between the open and the bald, I'm going to use the corner of my trimmer and just barely tap that line just to lighten it up a little bit. And then I'm going to go in with my clipper closed. And as I get towards the top of that guard line, you'll see me open the lever slowly. And again, guys, make sure you are using the corner. And remember, it's always in the detail. So you wanna make sure that that first transition from the skin to the open is as clean as possible. And now we're gonna go with our clipper, no, with our one guard all the way open. Sorry, again, going up about a half an inch, keeping that same exact shape that we've been doing when we set our guideline, using the corner of our blade. And then to get lighten up that line in between the open and the one open, I went ahead and closed my number one guard. It's not gonna get rid of that line fully. It was just to lighten it up. And now we're gonna go in with our one and a half guard all the way open, and then we'll close it gradually as needed. And don't be afraid to keep going over the same spot if it's not blending right the first time. You know what I'm saying? Because hair is not always going to respond the way you want it to. So if you need to go over it to lighten up a dark area, do so. You know what I mean? Take your time. Don't rush things. And now to kind of blend into the top, this is our two guard all the way open. And I'm really using the corner of my blade just to lighten up that area a little bit. We will follow it up with thinning shears just to give it a nice blend, a nicer blend. But this is just to lighten up the area and make it easier when we do go in without the ink shears. And then to get rid of that last line, <clears throat> we're going to go with our half guard open. And then we'll close it gradually as needed. And I cannot stress enough how important it is to use the corner of your blade because what that does is allows you to get in between the hairs 
and get into those dark areas that you couldn't get through the first time. So you'll see right here, I'm going in with my clipper all the way open using the corner of my blade. And when I do use the corner, it allows me to go into the number one area with my lever all the way open. And it just takes that little blend to the next level. So make sure you are using the corner of your blade to lighten up those dark areas. And then we're gonna lower his sideburn with a number one and it might not look like much now, but once we line it up and hit it with the razor, that sideburn will pop. And then we're just going ahead and blending into it, starting close and then opening it gradually. And to blend into the side, I'm gonna go ahead and use my thinning shears. If you guys remember, we did use a number four on the sides. So that just kind of softens that area up. And now to get into the neck taper in the back, I'm gonna go ahead and use my trimmer to set my first guideline. And this won't be a very high taper. So I'm starting a little bit below the bottom of the ear and just balding that out. And let the clipper do the work. You do not have to press on their skin super hard because the neck is a sensitive area so let the clipper do the work and then we're going to follow it up with the shaver letting the weight of the shaver <clears throat> kind of guide us we're not pressing uh too hard and now we're going to go with our lever all the way open going up about a half an inch making sure that that guideline is even all the way through that it's nice and symmetrical, that one side is not higher than the other. And now to lighten up that line in between the open and the bald, I'm gonna go ahead and use the corner of my trimmer and just lightly tap that line, just so when we come in with our clipper, it's a little bit easier to blend. And now we're gonna go with our clipper closed. And as we move up in that guideline, I'm gonna go ahead and open my lever. So right here, you'll see me start to go closed, going up slightly. And then right here, I opened up my lever a little bit more. Yeah, on the neck taper, we're going to be doing the same exact system as we did on the side. So family, I encourage you, there are a thousand ways to fade. So find what works for you. Find a routine that you can go to always, right? Because you don't go to war without a battle plan. So find a routine that works for you and try to perfect that. So again, we're just being consistent. <clears throat> just trying to detail that area, make sure that blend between the bald and the open is as clean as possible. And now moving on in the process, we're gonna go up a little bit higher with our number one guard all the way open. Again, keeping that same shape that we've been making with our guidelines, making sure that it's nice and even and symmetrical. And then to lighten up that line in between the open and the one guard open, I'm gonna go ahead and close my number one and just lighten up that line a little. So when we come in with our half guard, it's a little bit easier to blend. And now to blend into that four a little, that we used on the sides a little bit better, we're going with our two guard all the way open going up slightly make sure i'm flicking out we're not really setting a harsh line with this two guard and then i went ahead and closed it just attacking that line right above the one open and now this line that i'm pointing out we're gonna go ahead and take it out with our one and a half guard all the way open and then we'll close it gradually as needed to make sure this area is blended well.
and really making sure we are using the corners because in the back of the head there is a lot of dark spots just because that is where the occipital bone is located you know what i'm saying so make sure you are using the corner of your blade and getting as detailed as possible and now to get rid of that last line we're going to go with our half guard all the way open and it and if all the way open doesn't do the job we'll go ahead and close it as needed so right here i went ahead and closed the lever a little bit more and you'll see as we move on in the process that taper really starts to come come together so i'm going ahead and just attacking that line using the corner of my blade and i sped this portion up because i spent a lot of time using my half guard just trying to blend that as fa uh, as well as possible sorry not fast And I don't know if you guys can see that little divot in the middle of his neck area. We are definitely going to uh, go ahead and detail that and lighten that area up. So to be safe, I went with my number two guard first, just to see if it would do anything. But then I realized it wasn't doing much. So I went in with my one and a half guard using the corner of my blade to get into that area and lighten it up. And that just goes to show that the occipital bone definitely creates some dark areas. So I had to go back in detail. But as we go back in detail, you'll see it starts to come together. And right here, I'm going in with my lever all the way open, using the corner of my blade, fam. I'm stressing, use the corner of your blade. It will definitely take your blends and your tapers and your fades all the way to the next level. Which you want, you know what I'm saying? You don't want to be average. You want to be the best that you possibly can. So make sure you are putting your 120% into every cut. Now to line up the nape area, I always start at the top of the ear. Just so it's easier for me to keep that nice round shape in that area without, you know, taking it up too high. So I go ahead and start at the top, giving it that nice round shape, keeping it as natural as possible. And then I'll move on to the bottom of the nape area. And you'll see as we line this up, it'll really show <clears throat> that neck taper, man. And it makes it pop, man. Look at that. As we line it up, it just makes that taper look so crispy. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all those hairs that I didn't get the first time through. And now we're going to go ahead and comb it all down again. Just so we can get all the hairs. And then we're going to go ahead and reline it, just detailing the snape area line up. And when you line it up as well, it shows you imperfections that you need to go back in detail. So I'm going in with my lever all the way open again and just lightening up dark areas that I've seen after I lined up the nape area. Now to get into lining up the arch area, I always start at the top of the arch and then go to the bottom and meet it in the middle. So I'll start at the top, make sure I'm keeping it natural but getting it crispy. And then I'll move to the bottom and then I'll meet that joint in the middle. And what this does is it allows me to keep it as natural as possible while still getting that nice round shape in the arch area. And you can see as we do that process, it really brings everything together. That taper is looking pretty clean. We always go back in detail though. And then we'll go ahead and line up that sideburn area. Let me know what you guys think about this video so far down in the comment section, family. And now to get into the front lineup, I'm gonna go ahead and use some uh, hairspray, holding spray, just to lock those hairs in place. And right here, I'm showing you that all that is bangs. This is not going to be a pushback. So I'm gonna go ahead and start in the middle. And usually I always start in the middle of the head with my lineup, just so I don't push back, you know, too far. And be confident when you're doing the lineup, fam. I know you gotta be in front of the client and it could be all up in your grill, but be as confident as possible. And then I'll go ahead and move to the right side of the head 
gonna go ahead and line up that box that uh yeah that box area and then you always want to go back and recomb the hair especially when they have bangs because when they go home take a shower and comb the hair back down they will have straight hairs that you forgot so you always want to make sure that you recomb the hair and then reline it and now we're going to go ahead and move to the right side of his head and again keeping it as natural as possible you do not want to push the client back And then to add some, uh, you know, next level stuff to the haircut, I'm going to go ahead and use my hair fibers and just fill in those light areas. And this is temporary, but this is just so we can make sure that the client is feeling his best when he walks out the shop. So I went ahead and sprayed it in the light area, and then I'm going to go ahead and reline it. And you can see what that does, man. It makes his hairline look super sharp, super clean. And it's all about instilling confidence in the client family, making them feel the best that they possibly can. And I did respray it with hairspray just to lock in those fibers, but we're going to move on to the razor. And what the razor is going to do is take this haircut to a whole nother level, get rid of all those stubbles that the trimmer couldn't get. Make sure you always stretch the skin so you don't cut them. You want to make sure you're just getting those stubbles. And then this is a detail that most barbers don't do is behind the ear and neck area. I always use the razor on my tapers just because that hair does grow back quickly and it allows that line to look very sharp. But my client came in looking rough and he left looking crispy. YouTube, this is the cut. This is a nice low taper with a sideburn let me know what you guys think down in the comment section make sure you hit that like and subscribe button follow me at Drake clipper hands but yeah family thank you for watching much love